What you do guys welcome back to another day from the beautiful high sea and another episode of the season number 3 In this video I'm going to show you all what exactly we do to prepare a ship before arriving a port and of course what do we do on ports a lot of you had a question that what is my job on the port since all this cargo work is being done by the shore you know picking up the containers dropping them so what exactly i do i'm going to reveal in this video right now we are at sea as you see navigation full ahead somewhere out at sea taking the cargo from point a to point b which is our next destination and during this time we will receive a lot of emails from the shore department about various condition stability condition loading plan discharging plan arrival tank conditions this is the work of the chief officer but just for a good knowledge i'm going to give you a basic hint of what all is there this is a email from the next port and they tell us what will be our exp expected departure drafts bending movement torsion movements fuel shear forces etc so this is what i was telling you about the mail system we have to keep monitoring now you all must be wondering why do we need these conditions before arriving the port let me show you in the passage plan why these parameters are very crucial beforehand now this is a passage plan folder and inside there is something known as a port memo so our next port is on a port and you can see the minimum depths are being given here like 13.6 meters minimum depth from the river to the port is 12.1 alongside 12.2 12.2 but the main concern we have is of the port restrictions so the draft maximum draft in approach is 11.5 and the maximum draft alongside is 11.5 meters so what does this 11.5 meter mean exactly it means our draft which is the distance between the bottommost part of the ship the keel to the water line cannot exceed 11.5 meters now this is the responsibility of the captain and the chief officer that they comply with this and as a second officer since i'm making the passage from point a to point b i have to know that our drafts are not ex exceeding these limits so this is my job and this passage plan folder is being prepared by me before we arrive to the next destination so i'm pretty sure you must be curious as to what happens if we exceed these draft limits we will run aground that means we will hit the land or we will be sitting on the seabed and of course we don't want that so this is why monitoring all these emails you know checking the stability conditions we have a software i'll show you that once we reach the port this is the ballast system of the ship ballast means there is water inside tanks there are tanks below these containers inside the hull which keeps the which helps keep the vessel upright that means not like this not like this or like this or like this and reduce the stress and torsion bending movements of the ship now chief officer has given us a plan today of filling up four tanks in the forward with 200 tons each so this is these are the four tanks 1 2 3 4 4 ballasting operation is already done i just wanted to show you that the ship before before this ballasting was little bit trimmed from the stern now it has become upright means there is absolutely no trim like this or this it's straight so when we enter the river the squat will play an effect evenly on the ship not like the propeller or the stern going inside more like a like a wheelie on the bike now squat and all are various phenomena which act on the ship during its passage we'll cover that in another video if you are curious about it you can just google sqat and you'll understand what i'm talking about While you all enjoy the time lapse, let me introduce you all to the sponsor of this video, which is Eralo eSIM Store. As a seafarer, I am often asked as to how I upload YouTube videos from the ship. Well, the answer is simple. I use the Eralo application to buy an eSIM from anywhere in the world at an affordable price. Eralo is the world's first eSIM store that solves the pain of high roaming bills and gives access to over 200 countries and regions. When I arrive at the port, I'm connected to the network instantly and do not have to buy SIM cards from the vendors which are highly expensive and have a painful installation process. Buying a SIM card is fairly easy. I go to my Eralo application. Here you'll see a nice leak interface with list of countries. You can also search wherever you're going. So suppose we're going to the United States. So now you'll see a list of data bundles over here. So suppose I want 3 GB for 30 days. I go over here and press buy now. 
and here you can choose various payment methods like credit debit card paypal etc how to install the eSIM you go to my eSIM and you see a list of eSIMs purchased suppose this is the sim i want to install you press install eSIM you'll get a step by step instruction of what you have to do and there are three ways one is direct one is qr code and the last one is manual the list of all eSIM compatible phones are in the description you can also get 20% off on all eSIM purchases if you use my code ksn20 so download the app now so guys welcome back we are uh, almost almost going to go alongside the port just uh, yeah this is the ship's office so all the things which are required in the ship's office like the port papers so third officer prepares these papers and these have to be given to the authorities which i'll show you if i manage to and this is the chief officer's computer he is going to be using this as soon as the planner comes and we'll ask him what all he does here the crew has also prepared the port side gangway because we'll be going port side alongside so before and it is just put on deck level so once we go alongside we can put this on the jetty and the authorities can start coming in Now during port arrival we've got tugs which come to assist us so right now it's coming on our main deck you might be able to see it from here yeah it's coming it's coming over there you guys are getting ready ah uh, there is the tug so my main job to carry out this operation will be to keep all my men safe and take make fast the tug line so we've got this tug which will be our uh, tug to assist us and that will be the aft tug so the guys are preparing the line now then we start heaving up the the tug line so this is the remote control to operate the winch and guys will be preparing the line here the tug guy is right over there waiting for a line and there our line goes we have been working with the tug forward Tug is made fast. Power tug made fast. Tug made fast. So guys, tug operation done. All men safe. Tug is made fast on the bollard. It will help us in pulling the vessel out if required. Now we move to the forward station. Before starting the mooring operation, I have my men around me. we will uh, just do a quick safety meeting that means i'll tell them what the operation will be and we will introduce each crew member so hi i'm jason jason hi jb kailas hi oh is mohammad adnan so guys today we are going 4 plus 2 and spring line first one by one if you have any doubts stop me and if i have any doubts i'll stop you all right yeah, okay. so we'll conduct this safely yeah? Okay. yeah all right we have to ready our springs uh, jason we have over there he is behind engaging the drums and engaging the winches that's the controller and then we lay up the spring lines so that uh, we are ready once we reach our berth which is somewhere over there okay guys ready yeah okay so over here we have the winch number 2 we have to enable it once enable and we lay out the ropes like this these ropes are done I will go for the center line. So same thing to remove the control cover. Engage the drum and then pay out the line. So guys, today we will be going going four and two. That means we will have total six lines. Two over there, two over here. There will be a loose line with Jason right now. He's taking out the loose line and two on the port side. So total six. So Adnan, now we have to also make the anchors ready for emergency. So Adnan will show you what exactly we do. There is a pin which has to be removed and put inside this socket and also the lashings have been removed so in case there is emergency Adnan yeah we pick up this uh, bow stopper 
and open the brakes and the anchor will go so now i have to report it to the bridge cape town uh, forward both anchors ready for emergency yeah okay duty of say in the forward i have to keep reporting the distances to the captain so when the bow will be in line with the stern of the ship i will report it to the bridge so that they know exactly the orientation and where exactly our bow is headed now it's almost in line and i'll tell it to the bridge now what's happening captain now uh, forward bow in line with the stern of the vessel st george yeah, okay also on this port we will be using these swivel cranes not like the typical gantry crane so that will be interesting now it's a very critical operation we've got the end of the jetty right in front and we've got five bollards 1 2 3 4 5 bollard clearance so i have to keep reporting this to the captain so that he can stop the vessel before we touch the breakwater uh, the jetty captain forward 40 meters to the end of the jetty 40 meters you can send the spin forward and up okay copy that the heaving line that means once we go ashore we have to throw this line so that guys on the shore can pick up the springs one by one okay guys so the heaving line is there and we'll start sending our spring one one spring at a time we have one headline tied a one spring line so one and one now we'll work with the rest of the uh, lines so we do one and one so that we stop the ship's movement which is going forward as well as going sideways so to stop the forward movement is the spring line and to stop the sideways movement we have the head line captain forward holding on to 4 and 2 we will uh, go and cast off the tug now so once the mooring operation is complete we have to let go the forward tug so we are in process of doing that Tug on forward. Okay, forward tug on. We are done. All safe and secure. Okay, thank you, Adnan. Thank you, Kailaji. Thank you.